So let's just sum it up relative to the technologies and what the pros and cons are for each relative to applications. First, summarizing on ball screws, when do you want to use those? Well, in applications that have precision uh, in the uh, area of about a micron level and a speeds less than about a meter a second. Okay. Also, if you have an application requiring high force, that this is the drivetrain technology of choice. There are some difficulties using them. One, you have to know how to align them in your system. You have to understand bearings and so forth, but Parker can help, it, help you do that. Um, they can be noisy if you buy lower grade ball screws, but if you buy a quality ball screw, that's usually not an issue. And there is a maintenance interval to, to them, uh, depending on your application. Lead screws, this is where uh, a perfect technology if you have uh, something that you're doing for low duty cycle, kind of adjustment type of applications. Uh, they're inexpensive, they're easy to use, and the other thing they have is they have non-back driving abilities, meaning if you get the right lead screw and you're in the vertical axis, um, the uh, load will not back drive down. The, the screw is self-locking. It's about the only device really out there. All other devices tend to have to have counterbalancing or something like that to prevent them from falling. Now, the difficulties of using, of course, they are that lower efficiency, so you, you need to have higher forces on your motor to drive them, uh, and you also have potential resonance issues because they, uh, since they're a friction device, they're slip and stick to them, so you have to deal with those uh, potential issues. Timing belts. Uh, again, use them for uh, high-speed applications where you need long life and relatively low precision down in the 100 micron range. Difficulties, there, there are two difficulties with timing belts that uh, a lot of people just getting into them don't understand. One is that they have a periodic error, which means that the pulley itself is not perfectly round. So every time it, it rotates, it, is a, it becomes egg-shaped, so, so to speak, and gives you a sinusoidal uh, position output. Um, the other is the diameter of the pulley is never perfect. It's always off. It only has to be off by a very small amount, and that means that your distance is going to be longer or shorter, so it's not going to be accurate. Now, if your system is just repeatable, you know, you're doing everything on going to certain given positions that are taught, this is irrelevant. You can map that right out. Um, other things to think about when you're putting these to, uh, into use, one is uh, that they must have some form of belt tensioning. You can't just stick them together. You actually have to tension the belt to a pre-tension. And you have to take in design, uh, into your design uh, your pulley, uh, pulley bearings and sizing those properly so that you don't undersize them. Rack and pinions, uh, they're good for longer travels. Uh, also, if you need a stiff backbone to uh, like a vertical axis, that works very well. Uh, high uh, and also uh, high speed motion. So uh, difficulties using them, uh, the alignment of the rail has to be precise. Uh, the noise, uh, there can be noise, it is a metal on metal device, uh, so uh, you can have some noise. There are also uh, polymer uh, rack and pinions, and those polymer rack and pinions are rather quiet. Also you can get helix gears that will remove that noise. Uh, they do have backlash built into them. It's very difficult to get out. Uh, so if you need uh, more precision, about 50 microns, you don't want to really be working with rack and pinions. And now linear motors. Where do you want to use those? Really when you have a combination of needs. You need high speed, you need high precision, and you need uh, quick uh, settling times. That's a good place for linear motors to be used. Okay? Difficulties using them? Well, vertical, since there's no mechanical advantage whatsoever, you have to counterbalance them in some method. Otherwise, it just, they just fall. Uh, magnetic fields can be a problem. These use rare earth magnets, which are very strong. Depending on your process, if they're sensitive to magnets, that can be an issue. Um, uh, and they are, have less force density than the other drivetrains because there's no mechanical advantage at all. You cannot mechanically reduce it to get more force. And they also require a linear feedback. And that's most of the time. There are units out there that have built in Hall effect sensors that use the magnets to give you a, a coarse sense of position. But that is not very precise. It's not accurate. It's not high resolution. So you really don't get the full uh, uh, capability of a linear motor unless you're putting some type of external feedback onto it. At least that's true today. 
and and that extra feedback can also get you get to be expensive, and that's why they're more expensive.